It's so depressing in that place. We sit on benches and some people are crying. Nobody's smiling. When the receptionist calls you, they call you by number. They think they're going to escape the depression and the grief. And that's what happens. Depression and grief set in. And people don't think it's going to happen to them. Also, you have to remember the men. The men are the forgotten people that suffer. They suffer quietly. I am called a sidewalk counselor. I like to offer hope, help, and love. I started August of 2000, and I do faithfully go. I'm compelled to go every Tuesday and Wednesday morning. I rarely miss. Eleanor is very devoted to saving lives, and she spent 14 years counseling women and men who were going in to have their babies aborted and saving lives. I'm like the little voice right as they go to do something that's not right to say, wait, don't rush in. I can help you. So if a young couple come up the road, I say, good morning. How can I help you this morning? Many couples say, no, thank you. You cannot help me. The sad part of that is many come out after the abortion and they come over to me. I had one about three, well, four weeks ago now. She came out, put her head on my shoulder and sobbed. So I want to be there just to say, hey, wait a second. Don't rush in. Let's see what we can do to help you. They may say, I have a little boy, he's one year old, and I'm pregnant again. I have this wonderful job. I have to have this job, and I have to have this abortion. A woman might say, my father said, you don't come home here if you didn't have that abortion. Oh, I'm a senior in college and I want to finish school. So everything they say, I honor that. I say, I understand. I understand that is a challenge, but you can do it with help. I will surround you with all kinds of help. She is magnificent in dealing with uh, women who are concerned about, well, what should they do at this point? They would come here, they'd talk to Eleanor, she'd meet with um, family members, not just the woman, sometimes the father or brother or friend. And 14 years later, we have little boys and little girls and going to school and mother's calling saying, thank you, we have our little boy today. Thank you for being there. She has saved over 200 lives. And in the process of this, Planned Parenthood engaged the, the state of Massachusetts to pass a law that would forbid her from approaching the people that she loved and providing that sidewalk counseling. In 2008, the state of Massachusetts created a fixed buffer zone around abortion clinics. That particular statute said that people could not come within 35 feet of the entrances, exits, or driveways. And keeping somebody at least 35 feet away requires sidewalk counselors to shout. Eleanor, that's not how she operates. That's not her heart. That's not how she counsels women. This law prevented her from being able to peacefully engage women in a compassionate and a loving way. I was beginning to think, let it go, don't bother, we'll handle this buffer zone, but then it dawned on me, you can't take away our rights and just say, we're going to put the 35 foot buffer zone. No, we're going to question that. This was essentially a David v. Goliath type of a case. We had very, very limited resources, both financially and with respect to the amount of work that we could do. We were litigating against the Massachusetts Attorney General's office. It was a steep uphill legal battle that we fought for eight years, and we faced losses in the lower courts, but it was worth it in the end. Having laws like these struck down under this decision, it will greatly help sidewalk counselors to engage in kind and compassionate work and save human lives. ADF was instrumental 
uh, in this way. Without the help of ADF, without the support of the ministry partners, there's simply no way that we could have effectively uh, uh, put together the case that we did. For years and years and years, pro-lifers were portrayed as mean-spirited, ugly people who just wanted to yell at women who were going and seeking an abortion. And Eleanor was the opposite of that. Eleanor wanted to show her love and care and actually help these women. As a matter of fact, the New York Times characterized Eleanor as the new face of the pro-life movement. That new face is smiling, it's gentle, it's loving, it's kind. She really is a model of how to do this work. I'm sure it's hard to stand outside of Planned Parenthood as many, as many hours as she does in the cold and the heat, but she's really focused on the mission and on the women and then there's this joy. We're the voice of the unborn child and a child is about to lose his or her life. No child wants to die in the womb. Every child wants a birthday. You probably remember Mother Teresa said, you don't have to be successful, you do have to be faithful. So we're there as witnesses for the truth. That's my job. I don't know where all my brochures go, and I really don't have to know that. As long as I'm faithful, we are faithful witnesses trying to show compassion and try to offer help. It's simple, but it matters. And it's called love. And love, you cannot argue with that.